Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Adam. You're watching Unlimited Options Investing. I hope you guys are all doing well, especially after the crazy week we just went through. And now we're looking at this week's most anticipated earnings releases. It's going to be really tough to follow up, especially after the crazy week we just had. However, we actually have some pretty good names, especially on, I think it's Wednesday and Thursday and even on Friday. And getting right to it. So looking at Monday morning, I don't see anything that really interests me whatsoever. I know Triviago. I think it's like a hotel company, software company, I think. Uh, I don't know much about it. It doesn't interest me very much. The Clorox company, uh, that one actually didn't go up as much as I thought it would during the pandemic. Everyone favorously buying Lysol wipes and whatnot, but it didn't really go up that much as much as other stay-at-home stocks. Or Chegg, which is, I think, an online education company. I don't know much about them either. Nutrien, which I know is a really strong dividend company. And I actually believe they're Canadian. They've actually done very well for themselves over the past year, uh, as it is a very cyclical stock. And Simon Property Group is a company that I actually never got into. As when I first got into the market, real estate investment trusts weren't that hot of a sector. But if you look at the last, let's see over here, the last five years, so we had that major drop off during the pandemic, trading sideways. And this year, like a lot of real estate investment trust companies went up significantly by 133%. And that's pretty much it for Monday. On Tuesday morning, we have Pfizer. And we all know this one and its importance over the past year and a half when it comes to the pandemic. And we see it reflected in the stock price. It a big pump earlier this summer and then it falling down, uh, bottoming out at about $41 about a couple weeks ago. And we also have Corsair and this company I have lost so much money in. So uh, financial education, Jeremy has been talking about it for the better part of the year, how it's undervalued. And I do believe it is undervalued, but it is getting no love from the short sellers. And they actually came out earlier this month with a pre earnings release and it didn't look very good because of all the global short supplies that we've been having. So this one has been viciously the slow bleeding over the past six months down 26.31%. So I'm really interested to see how they perform Tuesday morning, but I guess we kind of have an idea since they came out with that pre-earnings pre release. So I don't know if the stock is going to be moving. Uh, after the close, I know Digital Turbine is a popular retail name as well as Activision Blizzard. I uh, will be interested to see how they do because they've been having a lot of political issues as well uh, with the treatment of their employees and whatnot. Taking a look at Wednesday, we have CVS Health. That one's kind of interesting to me because I also own uh, WBA stock, Walgreens Booth Alliance. And another one I'm going to be having my eye on is the, is the Discovery Channel because the founder of the Discovery Channel also made Curiosity Stream, which is another very small cap company that which is the Netflix of documentaries. And I could definitely see that one being bought out by either Disney or Netflix over time, Comcast as well. Looking after the clothes when we have a lot of fun. So you have Roku, Qualcomm, Skills, Fastly, Etsy. Oh man. So I know Roku and Skills for sure are Kathy Wood names. I'm not sure if Fastly and Etsy are as well, uh, but they are all hyper growth companies. And you have Qualcomm, which is very similar to a stock that I own, Skyworks Solution, which actually reports on Thursday afternoon, but we'll get to that point. They both make semiconductors for radio frequencies. And in my opinion, both stocks are trading pretty cheaply, especially relative to its all-time high that it hit earlier this year in January. And also take a look at the volatility of Roku, one of Kathy Woods. I mean, I know it used to be a really big holding of ARK Invest. I don't think it is as much right now, but look how volatile this is. Just crazy hyper growth companies, super volatile. Not to mention Fastly, this one's been super volatile as well. And Etsy's also been volatile toward the upside though. So this one's actually had a lot more success than the other ones. Taking a look at Thursday morning, you have Moderna. And this one has had a wild 2021. Taking a look at the last year, it's just gone up 414%. Seeing an especially big run up this past summer. You also have Barrick Gold, Nikola, ha ha ha, and Lightspeed, which is, which is actually a really highly talked about Canadian point of sale e-commerce company. And if you look at the last year for this one as well, it's up almost 200%. But Thursday after the close is when we have a lot of fun. Square, Pinterest, Uber, Airbnb, Mercado Libre, Peloton, Skywork Solutions. Oh man, Thursday afternoon is going to be crazy. Like I know last week was like all the big tech, but these are a lot of really good hy hyper growth companies as well. So let's take a look at them. Square over the past year, this, this one's also been super volatile. Up, down, up, down, up, down. We got a big push when we got the vaccine news last year. However, ever since then, we've been range bound anywhere from $200 all the way up to about, I think it was 280 or so. When you take a look at Pinterest, this one has been going down as of late. We had reached all time highs of about just under $90 a share. And now we're trading 50% lower than that. We had a little bit of a bump up a few weeks ago with the PayPal news, but, th but then PayPal said they're not really going after them anymore. And then it's been going down ever since, down 23.5% over the past year. Uber, this one when I first got on the market, I think was 30 bucks. I think it went as high as about 64 on the 52 week high. And I don't really know what to think of Uber. I know they have Uber Eats as well as a subsidiary, but I don't know how much traffic they're getting in terms of customers. It has an $82.57 billion. I don't really know if that's a good valuation or not. 
I have too many questions. I don't know enough about it to feel comfortable investing or trading Uber whatsoever at this point. I'm just sitting on the sidelines just waiting for either an opportunity or just I'm staying away. And that's as simple as that. Airbnb, on the other hand, is a stock that I do own. I love this company in terms of just, I think they have huge things ahead of them. I actually wish I bought more uh, when it was lower, but I just, I don't know with a company that is so new in terms of that just IPO just under a year ago, I believe. And it has a market cap of $107 billion, which is not nothing, even though, again, I do believe that they will be much higher in the next three, five, 10 years. I'm still really hesitant to add more at these prices because I just don't know how to value this company just yet. It's pretty much the type of company that I would be averaging in low or high and creating a position that way. Mercado Libre, this is the Amazon of South America. And this one's been pretty volatile as well over the past year. It's gone up as high as $2,000 a share twice. We see kind of a double top over here stretched over like an eight to nine month span. And now we've gone back down to just under $1,500. It has a $73.62 billion valuation. I can definitely see this one growing and growing over the upcoming decades. I have traded this one before and made a little bit of money on it. I would definitely be interested in getting back in it if it continues showing more and more weakness. As well as Peloton, which was one of the stay at home plays. This one went as high as $171 earlier this January. And ever since then, now we are trading at $92. Again, very volatile, another hyper growth stock. I'm not really touching it. It doesn't interest me that much. It's down 19.39% over the past year. And lastly, Skywork Solutions, one of my favorite stocks. And this one has been getting pretty punished over the past uh, few months where it was trading over $190 back in the summer. Now it's just trading under 170. I have big plans for the stock long term. I really, really like what they're doing. They're flawless fundamentally. They, they yield a 1.34% dividend yearly. And this is my absolute favorite 5G stock to be playing. Taking a look at Friday, we have DraftKings, Coinbase, Canopy Growth and Enbridge. Taking a look at DraftKings, so this one has also been quite volatile as well. Over the past year, it has a market cap of $37.23 billion with a 52-week high of 74.38 per share and a 52-week low of 34.9. Currently trading at $47.60. It's a very popular retail name and, and I feel this is the kind of stock that when it does eventually break its all-time highs, that's the type that's going to really run once it does do that. Coinbase, $319 a share with a market cap of $67.37 billion. This one was a direct public offering earlier this year back in April. And this one has been super volatile on the downside and on the upside. I do own the stock. I made the mistake of buying on day one and I uncomfortably averaged down over the upcoming few months. I do believe the valuation is gonna fluctuate very greatly. To the upside and the downside right now, crypto is doing very well. So we are seeing a lot of positive sentiment and bullish context, but I mean, crypto is unpredictable. If it starts going down, Coinbase will probably follow. However, I am very bullish on crypto as an asset class over the long term, and I believe Coinbase will profit greatly as a result. And opposite of Coinbase, lastly, we have Enbridge, which is a multinational pipeline company, which is actually not known for their hyper growth and for their dividend and value, yielding an annual dividend of 6.37%. And it's actually performed very strong this year, up 52.27%. And I don't know why I'm surprised because energy has had such a strong year this year. But that's it. These are the earnings of the upcoming week. Let me know in the comments below which ones you're most excited for. Otherwise, as always, subscribe, like, and I will see you in tomorrow's video.